and, and he had all of these things in his head to talk about. Tell your story, Larry. Tell your story. I said, ah, oh, another crazy American. <laughs> and, 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 but that evolved into the the hundred year anniversary of the Chinatown race riots, and from there it went on into cedar and bamboo, and and, and a few other things that happened, and, and that was really really where my involvement came in, and it was quite Im and it's one of those things uh, when we when in that film you see people that just work every day. They do things that they do without thinking of like this evening, the culmination of all of that, those tiny little things that we have done in sharing our stories, sharing the stories of the Asian communities, our father's community, our grandfather's stories from China, uh, and how our Aboriginal people work side by side and embrace the, the, the Chinese people to come into our community to be a part of it. And they became a huge part of it. And, they be, and it was a greater part of the city of Vancouver than most city of Vancouverites would, would really want to admit to. The Chinese people of that day supplied the produce for the city of Vancouver, supplied the produce for themselves, and also for the Muslim community. Without our relationship, many of us would not have survived. And I also say thank you. Thank you to my grandfather for coming here under an assumed name. Without our father coming here, who would I be? Would I even exist? Would I be here today doing what I'm doing? And it's through the hardships that created by Canada, by the exclusion and the determination of the people that are excluded, that carries our life forward, where we work together and we know together we can move forward. And that's something that I, I believe uh, what we, I, I really am uh, overwhelmed actually about tonight in the sense of this honoring that the Canadian Chinese Historical Society has bestowed upon the two brothers here when it was our whole family working together, both sides. When we went to China, when we went to Pyongyang, Uncle Edmund was with us. One of our father's uncles had children here who himself, Edmund, believes in his mind and in his heart that he's a Muslim child. He's a Muslim person, but he's 100% Chinese. And to me that uh, the real, really real story behind all of this is the, where the mind puts your place of being, regardless of your race or your color or, or your religion, it's where you are born, where you have grown up, and your relationship with, uh, with people, even though you have no kinship ties. You become part of that community. And Uncle Edmund, without his urging, we would not have gone to Jongsan. We would not have gone. Because my brother spoke of the fear of Uncle Tommy not wanting to apply for Canadian citizenship because he come in under an assumed name. He come under a paper name. 
I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but uh, uh, w without those people coming here and being a part of us, a lot of this society would never even exist. And that's something that I, I, uh, I really, really, truly believe that there got it. Uh, our fear of going to China was very, very strong be because our father wanted to send us back as young children so that we could get some Chinese values and, uh, uh, and be more Chinese than we are Musqueam. And it was always that fear which played into our adult lives where we would not go to, I know I would not go to China. And if it wasn't for a phone call in 2008 saying, will you go to Beijing? I would never ever have gone to China uh, because of that fear embedded into me as a little boy. And, and when my uncle Tommy said, I, uh, I don't get a pension until I'm 75 or 80 because that's what my papers say. Uh, he came in uh, and he was older than what his papers say uh, and he would not correct any of that. And uh, but that fear was instilled in us and, uh, and I couldn't go. But when Uncle Edmund said, let's go. Uh, you're gonna go the way we went and that is one of the most emotional times in my life I did not have this emotion when our dad passed away I never had this emotion when our mother passed away but when we walked into that village through that gateway and our relatives were there and uh, and our, our uncle that's alive in China uh, just sort of blew me away. Uh, in my mind, he was the spitting image of Uncle Tommy. It was like Uncle Tommy rose out of the grave to greet us. And that was just, uh, I could have just sat down and cried. Uh, and and uh, I've never had that emotion before. Uh, and just to see the relatives that were left behind and that were part of our lives. So I just want to say thank you to the Canadian Chinese Historical Society, Henry, for kickstarting us. And thank you to everyone that took the time to be here this evening to honor us, to, to stand us up, as they say in Hunt Kaminam language. We've been stood up this this evening uh, in in public and honored in public, and that's a real, really big honor in our community to be to be stood up. Not my girlfriend, but <laughs> <laughs> but to, to stand you up and lift you up and hold you up in front of your community and your relationships. Uh, so I want to say thank you. I truly, truly appreciate what's happened this evening. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm probably as uh, modest as my younger brother, but uh, it is something that uh, I have never had any expectations of anything, and I truly, truly appreciate it. So I. I said, if I was the empress, yeah, yeah, see you tall, see you tall, but not see, finish qualifying, couldn't see, see you tall, hi, Tafka, go, Jeff.